All right, so the Super League is back, and hopefully this time around, it's here to stay because what a lot of Premier League fans and Premier League clubs, they don't understand is that the world of football is not eating. It's just one league that is dominating. It's just one league that has a financial capability to be able to pay $100 million here and spend $400 million in a winter transfer window. The rest of the football world is not eating the same way that the Premier League clubs are. Most of the protests, if you look at it, comes from Premier League fans. It comes from these high morality fans that think that oh my god the super league is such a bad thing we're already living in a world of a super league i'll tell you the members of the present super league it's chelsea it's psg it's manchester city and a few other clubs it's an imaginary super league it's a super league that hasn't been recognized but they are in one because they are the only ones that have the capacity to be able to pay for all these things that are happening in today's world of football now i mean if we go through the rundown and see is it a good thing or a bad thing what's the statement that they actually made what are the changes that they actually put together is it here to stay uh, hint, hint, I think it is. And what kind of impact it's going to have on the world of football. Right now, you can't call it a good or a bad thing. Uh, depends on which world of football you're in. Depends which team's fan you actually are. I mean, at the end of the day, one of the biggest criticisms of the Super League was that it was a closed league. It wasn't open to anybody else. It's these 12 clubs that have come together. Uh, they're going to add three more clubs. I think it was going to be 15 and then five clubs that would go in and out. They would just drop in and out of the, the league itself. They fixed that. That's not the, that's not the case anymore. They're, they have, let's actually, you know what? This would probably be the right time to kind of go into uh, the statement that they made. So let's just uh, watch what the CEO, Bern Reichardt, of uh, what they're calling A22. Essentially, they're trying to stay away from the term Super League is what I'm noticing. If you, uh, to to let you guys know before you we, I even played this video, you'll notice he never actually uses the term Super League because there's a degree of... Uh, you know, a negative connotation to it. So let's just watch what he has to say. The future of European club football. Since then, we have spoken to nearly 50 European clubs and other stakeholders. The vast majority of them share the assessment that the very foundation of European football is under threat. Pretty much what changes this time around is that they've had a conversation with much more teams. Before it was Florentino Perez, Andrea Agnelli, uh, a select few people, Ivan Gazidis, who was a CEO of AC Milan, before it was a CEO of Arsenal when this whole thing was getting cooked up, including uh, the Glazers, they were sitting in kind of creating this thing. This time around, they decided to change their tactics. They decided to include more people, talk to more clubs. I believe they've spoken to, what, 80 different teams, if actually we look in the title. So let's get back to uh, what he has to say here. It is time for change. European club football is at a tipping point. Huge imbalances have emerged across the continent and clubs with glorious European traditions are no longer able to compete. This is the important part that a lot of people don't realize is that they somehow, I don't know why, there's this belief system that somehow UEFA are the good guys. UEFA are the caretakers of football. They're not. They're just trying to profit as well. They're trying to increase their revenue and put more money in their pockets too. FIFA and UEFA, we've seen a track record of an extreme amount of, I don't want to say they're corrupt because I, I, there's it's difficult to kind of corroborate if they're actually corrupt in this particular case of the Super League and the Champions League. But what we do know is they want more money. They want more competitions. What do you think the point of the UEFA Nations League was? It was just another way for UEFA to figure out, hey, we can stuff some more money into our coffers. So this belief system that a lot of fans have that somehow UEFA are the good guys and the European Super League are the bad guys. No, I think the European Super League can be questioned in terms of their integrity, but you cannot possibly tell me that UEFA shouldn't be questioned for their integrity as well. Share the assessment that the very foundation of European football is under threat. It is time for change. European club football is at a tipping point. Huge imbalances have emerged across the continent and clubs with glorious European traditions are no longer able to compete. See, when he talks about the fact that there are clubs with history and stuff that are no longer able to compete and imbalances, he's not just talking about their balance sheets. He's also talking about the way that UEFA deals with a lot of the FFP problems. Financial fair play is not really the most fair. If you really look at the kind of punishments that have been dished out to certain clubs, you look at the punishment that was dished out to Roma were sanctioned, AC Milan were sanctioned for not being able to play European competition. And you look at what Manchester City has been doing for the last 14 years, you look at it and say, wait, what was going on here? How can somebody, how can UEFA go through, I mean, okay, alleged 100 plus breaches, it's 100 plus breaches over 14 seasons, guys. We're not going to be sitting around here like uh, completely clueless fools saying, oh, there must be nothing that went wrong. Of course, there was a lot going wrong with Manchester City. And UEFA did their investigation and they got away with it. 
They just said, yeah, you're good to go. Everything's fine and clean. But if you look at Roma, oh my God, we got to sanction these guys. You look at AC Milan, oh my God, we got to sanction these guys. But these other guys were paying millions and millions, creating secondary clubs in Abu Dhabi to play their coaches outside of playing, if, paying those coaches from their own coffers. That's perfectly fine. We excuse that. That's the imbalance that he's talking about. It's not just about the financial imbalance. It's also about application of rules imbalance that a lot of teams outside of the Premier League feel. All entrepreneurial risks, but too often are forced to sit on the sidelines when key decisions are made and they are watching their sporting and financial foundations crumble. And our discussions have made clear clubs are often unable to publicly speak up against a system where the threat of sanctions is used to stifle opposition. They do feel stifled. They cannot speak up. I don't think that goes away with the Super League. If you have clubs, like as I said earlier, I have a problem with Real Madrid, Juventus, and Barcelona running this show too. That I'm not comfortable with those three teams saying, hey, we're going to be the caretakers of this league. No, it has to be an independent group that takes care of the league. There has to be proper checks and balances. They have to, that's what I'm saying. I'm not pro or anti-Super League yet, I do see the possibility that it's something that has to come into the world of football in order to make it move forward because right now, outside of the Premier League, clubs are struggling. Later this year, the Court of Justice of the European Union will rule on the legality and the compatibility of the wafer monopoly with the fundamental freedoms, principles, and values of the EU. So I think um, this probably is then a video that was recorded before right by these guys because they were aware that this uh this judgment is going to be coming about i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure if he's referring to the same judgment but there was a judgment that came out what maybe two days ago pretty much saying that the approach by these clubs to create a super league is not against the law our objective is to present a sustainable sporting project for european club competitions available at a minimum to all 27 eu member states that's the key what he just said right now, that's a very important point. If you didn't notice it, I should probably replay it. Objective ...is to present a sustainable sporting project for European club competitions available at a minimum to all 27 EU member states. To all 27 EU member states. Guess who's not a member of the EU member states? England. Or I guess UK. I don't know, I don't know who's involved in Brexit. I guess it was all of them. But... Um, the Premier League isn't. They're not involved in the 27 EU states. So I think five months ago, Adriano Galliani, the former CEO of AC Milan, came out and actually actively said that the European Super League should be created with the absence of Premier League teams. Today, we present the preliminary results of the first phase of our dialogue, which has been honest, direct, and constructive. And there are clear conclusions about the need for change and the building blocks of how to achieve it. We have distilled the consistent feedback into 10 principles, which should set the framework for a future European club competition. Clearly. Notice again, he's not using the word Super League, European club competition. They know that there's a negative connotation to it. They're trying to stay away from it, but they understand that there's a need to change the current dynamic of football. That's why now they're including 80 teams in it. There is more work to be done and the dialogue will continue. We are now entering the decisive phase for the future governance of European club football. So then. Here to stay? Yeah. The European League is here to stay. The, the Super League is here to stay. I don't know what they're going to call it, if they're going to stick with the name or not. It's absolutely here to stay because if you look at what has happened over the past month in the winter transfer window, these catalysts, the courts coming in and saying, hey, Super League is not illegal. Todd Bowley coming in and spending, what, $600 million in the first two transfer windows. Five, $400 million, whatever million, hundreds of millions spent basically in one winter transfer window. I don't think all the other top football leagues combined spent what the English Premier League and specifically Chelsea Football Club spent in the last transfer window. The reality is this. The reality is that all Premier League clubs, six Premier League clubs have taken a degree of domination and control in the world of football that is not allowing other teams to be able to prosper. 
because what the six domination has done is it's it elevated the Premier League. And this is not a criticism of the of the Premier League. They've done a fantastic job with how they've uh, brought sponsors in, uh, minus the Manchester City sponsors. I don't know which Bitcoin they brought in or which cryptocurrency they brought in that didn't even have an office or a CEO. But uh, that's that was their sponsor, if you know what I mean. So uh, the Premier League clubs in general have done a very good job with how they've elevated and brought English businesses to really create a... Uh, highly profitable league and obviously the recruitment the sky sport deal everything that the premier league has done has is enviable and it's something that a lot of clubs should look at trying to replicate no question about that this is not a criticism of them but what the reality is that at this point in time that gap is increasing if i give you an example the last uh international tv deal that the city i had from 21 to 2024 i believe was 670 million euros for the league international revenue in the same time period, I believe it's the same time period, the Premier League's deal was 6.55 billion. 670 million and 6.55 billion. Now, a lot of Premier League fans will say, well, how is that our fault? How is that our league's fault? It's not. It's not some it's not anybody's really anybody's fault. It's the lack of um lack of competence really from Serie A that has caused their league to dwindle and go down the way it has. No question about that. But the disparity and the difference and the, the gap is only increasing. And all these other clubs, they're smart. They're not going to just sit around and say, oh yeah, you know what? We're going to watch all the Premier League and all these clubs take over football. They're going to say, no, we have to do something else. You have a club like Newcastle United that has owners that are the richest in the world. You have clubs like Todd Bowley that have billions and million, hundreds of millions to be able to spend. What the Super League was doing was it was giving the 12 teams, the top 12 teams that were going to be a part of it, everybody was getting 300 million to spend. Everybody was getting 300 million to spend. So it actually created not a gap. It made it more consistent. Everybody was actually able to eat and create and buy the right players because everybody was given a similar budget from what I believe was being funded by JP Morgan. Don't quote me on that. I can't remember who was funding it, but that was the expectation. Obviously, that's not happening anymore. Now they're open to more leagues and more teams. I think it's probably a step in the right direction for the future of football. UEFA is not going to be happy with that. They're going to be funding a lot of the protests. People think that it was all the fans, the fans that protested the creation of La Super League and the fans brought it down. You know how much funding came from UEFA for that? You think, remember there was a plane flying in the sky that said no, say no to Super League? You think a fan funded that plane? No, it was UEFA. UEFA doesn't want to lose control over football. UEFA is scared that they might lose control over football because all the top teams want to create this league. And if all the top teams walk away from the ECA, from the European Football Association, EFA, sorry, I think that's what it's called, they know that they cannot survive without Real Madrid, AC Milan, Barcelona. Uh, you can even name the Premier League clubs, possibly. They know that they can't survive without these clubs because if you really think about it, do you want to watch Chelsea play Bournemouth in the Premier League? Or do you want to watch Barcelona and AC Milan play each other when both of them have good funding and both of them have good quality players? You want to watch Real Madrid play Juventus? Or do you want to watch Arsenal play Wolves? It's obvious. Everybody's going to want to watch the version of the European Super League. So UEFA knows that. They're going to try and thwart that. A lot of Premier League fans are against that because they're the only ones who actually have the ability to prosper and make money and earn money and spend money on big quality players. The other leagues don't. The impact of what's going to happen with the Super League. Obviously, it has the potential to change the dynamic of football. But at certain points of time, every single league has to, every, uh, a lot of sport has to evolve. And it almost feels like this might be, might be with what is happening with the overspending of English clubs and complete lack of ability to spend for other clubs. What might be happening is that the disparity between these leagues is increasing. And it might just be that this gap that is being created will be filled up by the Super League. I think over the long run, uh, it's hard to say if the English clubs are going to get involved or not. I think a lot of them will eventually get involved. I don't think this one is going away. I think this European League is here to stay. I think they're going to take their sweet time. They're not going to do it in secrecy. Clearly, they're releasing videos because they're aware that this time around, they have to do it in a more transparent manner. But the Super League in itself is not going to go away. As long as it's not a closed shop of 15 teams and it's open to 50 or 80 clubs, I'm not mad at that. So let me know in the comment section, what do you guys think? Are you against the Super League? Are you for the Super League? And let me know which club you support because it's really important. I do want to see what opinion is coming from what kind of fan base. And once again, if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button uh, to watch Football Kush videos as soon as I put them out.